Thanks, Mike. And again, uh, thank you to uh, PK and everyone uh, here for uh, inviting me to lecture. Uh, it's a great honor. Uh, I'm going to shift gears away from the arterial system to the, uh, to the venous system and focus on a topic that is, uh, I think, a sort of up-and-coming field, which is intervention on uh, deep vein thrombosis. These are my disclosures of note. I uh, uh, consult on a, uh, 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 a board that uh, ran a registry on one of the thrombectomy products I'm going to mention uh, this afternoon. So uh, obviously the question is, why do we treat deep vein thrombosis? Obviously, we're all taught in medical school and in our graduate uh, training that we want to prevent pulmonary embolism which can be a catastrophic event in anybody with a venous thromboembolism. But what's potentially less obvious is we want to uh, prevent the devastating consequences on the patient's limb. And uh, DVT, as we all know, can take somebody who's young and otherwise healthy, take them out of the workforce. Uh, it can be a very debilitating, painful uh, condition. It's a significant burden on uh, uh, not only the pri private payers, but the public payers as well. Uh, this is an advanced form of venous thromboembolism, uh, so-called uh, advanced post-thrombotic syndrome or venous uh, stasis ulcers. These are uh, actually young patients, patients under, under the age of uh, 50, uh, who uh, can't work and they're uh, really bound to medical clinics receiving wound care uh, and they uh, really have limited physical uh, activity. The post-thrombotic syndrome is a, a syndrome characterized by chronic leg heaviness, achingness, claudication, uh, although on the venous side they have normal arterial system, varicosities and chronic uh, skin changes. Catheter-directed thrombolysis has been previously studied, but the previous studies really didn't change the treatment paradigm. I would argue that everyone in this room is now referring their patients with deep vein thrombosis for endovascular intervention. I'm going to get you on a brief tale as to why that uh, answer is. One of the answers is that there haven't been randomized trials previously. Uh, there was concern about morbidity and uh, major bleeding, and there were certainly concerns about the cost and the duration of the procedures, typically involving a step-down unit or an intensive uh, care unit. This is uh, a uh, sort of uh, a review of the uh, catheter-directed uh, trials um, with, uh, sorry about the typo, the resolution of the symptoms, the number of the patients, and the bleeding rates here. And this is uh, a PC to MAC uh, conversion error, so sorry about the text uh, changes. So what you see is that you have resolution of the symptoms in a very, very high degree of uh, patients that undergone catheter-directed therapy with adjunctive uh, techniques here. Um, and you're approaching very, very high rates of uh, significant uh, uh, complete resolution. When you include both partial and complete resolution, it approaches 100% of the patients with pharmacomechanical techniques, not just catheter-directed thrombolysis, but thrombectomy as well, achieving very, very high degrees of symptomatic resolution with very, very low bleeding rates. And why was pharmacomechanical thrombectomy introduced into clinical practice? Well, there was concern that thrombolysis alone had technical drawbacks. Most commonly cited were the long infusion times in the venous registry, the average infusion rate, the average treatment time was anywhere from 30 to 80 hours with a mean treatment time of just under two days. There were significant concerns about bleeding risk with two-day rates of uh, catheter-directed thrombolysis, and obviously uh, ICUs cost at least $10,000 a day. In certain major metropolitan areas, this can be up to twenty dollars or $30,000 a day. So this is not an inexpensive endeavor. This is a uh, previous study out of uh, uh, Hopkins, which looked at their experience specifically analyzing catheter-directed thrombolysis as compared to catheter-directed thrombolysis combined with percutaneous mechanical thrombectomy. Uh, really no differences in the patient cohort that was analyzed here. However, there was a significant reduction in the treatment time and a significant reduction in the urokinase dose that the patient was uh, exposed to, suggesting that the introduction of mechanical thrombectomy can reduce procedure times and hopefully offer a safety safety to the uh, patient population. This also had a benefit of having a slightly greater rate of patients that had greater, greater than 90% lysis, greater than 80%, and the cost was reduced by almost 50%. Um, obviously, they we're approaching a much more attractive treatment paradigm for patients with symptomatic DVT. The uh, introduction of uh, mechanical thrombectomy has the enhancement of uh, potentially uh, improving the delivery of the thrombolytic agent to the thrombus, reducing the duration the patient's exposed to the thrombolytic agent, uh, enhancing the efficacy of the thrombus removal prior to the uh, initiation of mechanical thrombectomy, and in many centers, including here at Mount Sinai, we've been able to eliminate the need for an ICU stay overnight. We have not dripped a patient overnight in the last seven years. Um, in terms of the incidence of reflux, 
um, uh, between patients that receive catheter-directed thrombolysis and percutaneous mechanical thrombectomy. There appears to be a benefit, although this is not statistically significant, yes, but certainly a trend in reducing venous reflux in the deep venous uh, circulation with the introduction of percutaneous mechanical thrombectomy, suggesting that it is a more thorough, more aggressive debulking of the thrombus burden, preserving valvular function. Uh, and again, this actually seems to be most apparent when catheter-directed thrombolysis is compared to angiojet specifically, but again, a significant trend with the Trello system uh, as well. The chest guidelines have been uh, very... Um, schizophrenic, for lack of a better word, over the last decade or so, uh, either espousing the benefits of catheter-directed interventions for deep vein thrombosis or trying to be more conservative and treat patients with just anticoagulation alone. If you look at the 2008 uh, guidelines, they actually suggested pharmacanical thromb uh, thrombolysis in preference to catheter-directed thrombolysis uh, alone. Um, and the benefit of this is to reduce the acute symptoms and post-thrombotic uh, morbidity of a iliofemoral deep vein thrombosis thrombosis, obviously, if appropriate expertise and resources are uh, available. Specifically, the introduction of mechanical techniques are recommended to shorten the, uh, the treatment time, again, if there's local expertise. Um, this was updated just a few years ago with the 2012 guidelines, slightly a larger field in the author uh, pool. And unfortunately, this was a, a much more sobering uh, recommendation. In patients with acute proximal DVT, we suggest anticoagulation therapy alone over any kind of catheter-directed uh, thrombolysis. And the remarks here were the patients who are most likely to benefit from catheter-directed thrombolysis are those who attach a high value to prevention of post-thrombotic syndromes, suggesting that the patients have to advocate for themselves to find an expert in the field that will remove their clot. And these are patients that uh, value the functionality of their leg and feel that they can accept the low risk of bleeding with catheter-directed uh, thrombolysis. So unfortunately, this was a very, very sobering recommendation. This did not take into consideration the American Heart Association recommendation uh, published by uh, several of our uh, friends and uh, colleagues from around the uh, country, most notably uh, Mike Jaff, Steve Jenkins, Sam Goldhaber. And specifically, they did make a recommendation, again, for the uh, use of catheter-directed uh, thrombolysis for iliofemoral DVT to reduce the post-thrombotic syndrome in patients who are at uh, low uh, uh, bleeding risk. So uh, again, uh, slightly discordant recommendations between the CHESS guidelines and the American Heart Association guidelines. And these were all published before the only randomized trial that's been performed so far. And this is the CAVIN trial, which was published in, in the Lancet a little over a year ago, which solely randomized patients with iliofemoral DVT to anticoagulation therapy versus catheter-directed thrombolysis without mechanical thrombectomy, as well as, as well as anticoagulation. And what this trial showed with a statistically significant benefit was a reduction in the post-thrombotic syndrome at 24 months of 41% seen in catheter-directed thrombolysis as compared to 56% in anticoagulation alone, and a benefit towards catheter-directed thrombolysis, improving iliofemoral venous patency with 66% of the veins being patent at 24 months as compared to 47% of the veins being patent in anticoagulation alone. The first level one evidence we have that patients should be offered at least a minimal of catheter-directed thrombolysis to reduce their risk of the post-thrombotic syndrome uh, and improve their venous patency and uh, hopefully long-term dev devastating consequences in their lower extremity uh, uh, symptoms. If you look at these results of CAVIN, is compared to the historic venous registry and then the recent angiojet registry, which is in peer review right now, what you've seen is a reduction from uh, 58 hours of catheter thrombolysis in the venous registry down to 48 hours in the CAVIN trial and now in the recent angiojet registry down to 17 hours. And again, in certain centers of excellence, this can be as down uh, to about six or seven hours in time, clearly demonstrating improved safety of the procedure and the uh, trend towards moving this procedure procedure to an outpatient setting, which is, I think, where we all feel that it should uh, remain. My indications in my practice for interventional therapy for deep vein thrombosis are any young functional patient with an acute DVT, they should be offered this treatment and they should be, uh, they should be able to decide uh, for themselves whether or not they place a value uh, on their lifestyle, whether they're willing to accept the bleeding risk of being exposed to a thrombolytic agent. Anyone with extensive thrombus burden, anyone with acute or subacute caval thrombosis, patients with phlegmasia cerulean 
the Adolans are obviously venous emergencies. We mobilize teams uh, urgently to manage that. Anyone with a high risk of a fatal pulmonary embolism or a thrombosis of a, a filter that is symptomatic. Anybody who has failed anticoagulation uh, and has propagation of their clot. Anybody with a mechanical cause for their DVT is documented on cross-sectional imaging. We will have randomized uh, prospective data in this country with the uh, finalization later this year of the ATTRACT trial, which is uh, going to monitor pharmacomechanical thrombolysis in 700 patients across North America to anticoagulation alone. Uh, this is a multi-specialty uh, trial funded by NHLBI, which will uh, look to see whether pharmacomechanical thrombectomy can prevent the post-thrombotic syndrome and whether or not it is safe and cost-effective. And then lastly, what the mechanism of the prevention of the post-thrombotic syndrome is as well. In my own patients, again, I explained the risks and benefits just as I presented the evidence to you here. Uh, and I have a different office visit for someone who's young and active versus someone who is elderly and frail. Patients really choose and make an educated decision because at the present time, level one conclusive evidence does not exist for pharmacomechanical thrombectomy. Thank you for your attention.